Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you'd like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. We're nearing the end of December, and that means that it's time for December favorites, but that also means that this will be the last houseplant favorites video of 2023 that I'll be making, which to be completely frank with you, I don't think that I'm entirely ready for that, but here we are anyways. Uh, I'm never really ready for the year to change. I don't know if you guys relate to that at all. Every year I'm caught off guard and wonder where the time has gone. It's like, <laughs> anyways, let's not get into that. Let's talk about <laughs> the plants that really stood out to me this month and that have brought me a lot of extra joy. Oh. The first plant that I want to talk about is right here in the cabinet. This right here is my Hoya Linearis and if you are at all familiar with my collection you'll be like hey, Joy when did you repot this plant? And I repotted it earlier today and I wanted to actually film a video make a whole plant chores thing but the only thing that I had time to do was to repot this Hoya Linearis. And so I just, I, I knew that I didn't have time to film an entire video. So I did go ahead and film it just for the sake of, I don't know, having it on record, I guess, because this is something that's making me really, really, really happy right now. But in terms of like how much time I knew I have to edit this month, how many videos I can actually put out, I just didn't think that I would even have the capacity to do a plant chores video, especially because I knew that I wanted to feature this and my favorites video, like after it being repotted. So yeah, for the sake of consistency and whatnot, I just decided to not do a dedicated plant chores video that included repotting the Hoya Linearis. And honestly, I didn't want to really wait any longer. This plant makes me so, so happy because I took cuttings of it. Um, I've been taking cuttings of it periodically and potting it back into the pot. And I mean, you guys, this, is, this is, might be like one of my happiest success stories in terms of plants because I think I'm going to try to insert a clip editing me don't hate me <laughs> I'm going to try to insert a clip of how baby this linearis was when I first got it a couple of years ago I literally have grown this thing from like a tiny sprig I guess like this big it was so small and I had no idea that it would grow this much I, I mean I just I had high hopes that I would be able to grow an entire plant from that but I was skeptical like I didn't I was pretty new to Hoya and I just I don't know I, I didn't think that it would ever reach this point and now it has officially now that I've um potted in more cuttings I mean it was like approaching a, a, a spot that I really really liked but now that I've potted this up I'm just it's so full now. It's feeling like a full plant. I'm just gonna keep on propagating it and adding it back into the top of the pot to get it fuller and fuller. But like, look, oh my gosh, it's so fun. And honestly, I will say I've been keeping it in the greenhouse cabinet and I absolutely loves it in there. I don't know if I'll ever get away with taking it out of the greenhouse cabinet. I mean, maybe someday, but it just loves it so much and it grows so vigorously in there. Maybe it would grow just as well, but it's been so happy in the cabinet that I, I don't have the heart to take it out. Also, I feel like this would be awfully tempting for my cats to uh, nibble on because they don't usually bother my plants with the exception of plants like this because they look appetizing, I guess. And even beyond my chopping and propping, like this right here was an entirely new growth point that it spat out and has started from existing vines that were already in here. So guys, it's seriously, like look at, it's getting so long. It's getting so long and so lush. I can't, I can't really get over it. <laughs> As far as the Linearis itself, I will always love how delicate this plant is, how unique it is. The way that it cascades is just, some, there's something so beautiful about it. And if this ever blooms for me, I will be deceased. I just, I don't know what I would do. I'm trying to see if it has any peduncles, but I really don't think so. Maybe someday, I just, 
Mm. But yeah, it's the leaves are unexpectedly fuzzy and it's so delicate and I feel like it's pretty unique as far as Hoya go. So far, honestly, this plant has been relatively easy care for me. I haven't had a whole lot of issues at all with it. I've spotted a mealybug on it maybe once or twice, but like I've, I've never like dealt with a, an entire massive infestation or anything and it's always rooted relatively easily for me. So I do hope that the ease of care continues for this plant. I think that it helps that I've been keeping it not and terracotta because I've heard from people that the Hoya linearis doesn't like to dry out way too much. I mean, some of the other Hoya species out there are very, very drought tolerant and they store a lot of water in their leaves, but this guy obviously has very delicate, dainty leaves. So I, I think that maybe it just isn't quite as good at retaining water as some other Hoya out there. So I kept it in a little plastic pot and I just used the terracotta as a cash flow because I thought it looked nicer. And of course, yes, I love the way that the terracotta is paired with this, but I, I am really pleased with this little pot right here. I think that it's from the sill. I happened upon it ages ago. It just appeared in my pots and I was like, I mean, I will take it. It's a nice pot. But I did, this is actually one of the only pots I've ever drilled a drainage hole into. So yeah, I think it's honestly super, super cute. This is what my rattlesnake Calathea used to be in before I repotted it because it was apparently root bound and I didn't realize it. I just had this one laying around and I thought, wow, okay, that's actually like the perfect size. And since it's ceramic and not terracotta, it'll kind of continue to retain the, the moisture that this plant needs. So all in all, I'm so happy with this plant, you guys. The next plant on my favorites is this little jewel orchid or Ludicia discolor. I got this plant relatively recently. I really haven't done anything with it yet. I haven't repotted it yet. I haven't really even decided fully where I'm gonna put it. But you guys, just out of the blue, I, I've just had this for like three weeks and it's just putting off blooms. Like, it's not fully fully in bloom. I wish, oh, I so wish that I could have waited to film this video until a little bit later to where it would be fully in bloom, but I just, I'm not gonna have time to film in the next week other than right now because I have family coming in town. So I just was like, all right, it's gonna be now or never for this video. And I will say just, oh my gosh, like the one, the few blooms that are already out are so, cute you guys oh my gosh and there's so many like flowers coming up and i'm just i'm so stunned that it's flowering i don't really understand i don't really understand why or if i did anything right or wrong so if you're really familiar with this plant let me know like maybe it does just bloom super super easily but i did get this plant like not even a month ago so obviously my experience with it is very very baby. But yeah, that's the main reason that it's in my favorites list is that it's blooming. And I just think that the, that the blooms are super, super cute. Now, I do prefer the foliage to the blooms. I mean, they're very sweet blooms and I'm very, very happy that it bloomed for me. But something about this foliage, I mean, this is definitely a plant that I'm growing because the leaves are just to die for. So in the long term, if this plant ends up being a super prolific bloomer, I might chop off the blooms, you know, eventually if I feel like it's impeding the growth of the leaves, but you'll have to let me know what your experience is with this plant. Like, do you trim off the blooms? Like, do you even like the blooms or do you grow this for the foliage? I mean, how do you, how do you, how do we feel about it? Because with most orchids out there, people tend to grow them because they want them to bloom, they want them to flower. But jewel orchids seem a little bit different to me since the flowers are so like small and understated and the foliage is really, really nice. But yeah, I mean, I certainly don't mind the blooms. And in general, if a plant blooms for me, I feel very happy and honored. And I just see it as part of the plant parenthood experience where now I can kind of check that off the box of like, okay, with the Ludicia disc color. I've witnessed it bloom. I, I've seen what that's like. I, I've seen parts of the process of, of this plant's life cycle, like of what the plant is capable of doing. And so even if long-term I don't keep the blooms every single time it blooms, like later on, I, when I keep the plant, I am just generally very, very happy to be able to witness it. Does that make sense? Like when I'm growing a plant, I like to see kind of the whole breadth of what it's capable of. But yeah, I find it super satisfying. And there are so many other little buds that will also 
eventually bloom. I, I was doing a, a very small amount of research and it sounds like if you want the plant to grow more compact and bushy, yeah, you should trim off the blooms. But if you don't mind it getting more elongated and kind of stretching out a bit, then you can keep the bloom. So I don't know, we'll have to see. But if this is a sign that it's happy, which I don't know, blooms can also mean that they're stressed out. So I'm kind of taking it with a grain of salt, but if it is actually happy, that just makes me happy because yeah, it's like, okay, it's confirmation that I'm at least doing something right. The next plant I'm gonna talk about is my Monstera Siltipicana. And I was not sure that this plant would ever make it onto my favorites list because for the longest time, it just, it gave me grief. Like I love this plant from afar, but it's like, I got it pretty early on in my plant journey, maybe like a month or two after I even started this YouTube channel. So that would have been maybe back in October or November of 2021. When I originally got this plant, and it like immediately got root rot. I think that I purchased it with root rot. So I had to like chop it up and reroot it. It just, it kept on like losing lower leaves. I could never really figure out what it wanted from me as far as like light and watering. I did take a propagation of it that took off and, and was super, super healthy that I was keeping in the cabinet for a while. And I thought that I was gonna end up giving that one away, but on a whim, and you'll see you'll see this in my last video that I filmed that's up on my channel to like a repot Q and A. I went ahead and, and potted up, you know, kind of my original monster, Siltipicana, with my other little propagation that had been growing. And it's been about a week now. And let me tell you, this thing has perked up in a way that like, I just never could have predicted. It always seemed so droopy. Oh. And even just the way that it laid, like it just wasn't nice at all. Over the last several days, it has just really settled in to this pot and kind of come into itself. And it's just, it's looking really, really pretty and decently full. Like this is the best that this plant has ever looked for me. And I'm honestly so, so pleased because I've always really liked this plant from afar. I really enjoyed seeing people's full baskets or even if they decided to grow up a pole, like, I don't know, I just, I always liked how this plant looked, but in my own collection, it always left kind of a sour taste in my mouth because yeah, it had root rot at one point and I think it rotted again. And it just was never looking nice and happy for me, but now it, it is. And I don't wanna just like automatically assume that it's going to do well from here on out. I mean, I'm kind of, I have a cautious optimism about this plant right now because again, it's only been like a week, but so far, I mean, it's just looking so nice and I love it. And I, I have considered growing this plant like up a pole because this plant really seems to enjoy growing up. The leaves progressively get smaller since they're not climbing anything is my guess. I might toy around with putting this in the cabinet or I might experiment a little bit with the conditions that I give it because I really do want this plant to thrive. And I actually think that it, it kind of resembles ivy a little bit, which I think makes my husband happy because ivy is his like favorite house plant, which I don't understand, but I mean, the look of this I think is quite cute and it does look a lot like ivy. Do let me know what your experience is with the Monstera Siltipicana, but as of right now, I am really, really, really happy with the way that it's growing. And I just hope that it continues down this path. And I, I hope to also propagate it and add more into the pot and make it fuller in the future. This is my Hoya Fichii. I'm just now realizing that one of the trends of this favorites video is that a lot of these plants are plants that I've grown from really, really tiny plants or they're plants that have just come a really long way. And that's also how I feel about the Hoya Fichii. So again, I'm probably gonna pull up some old footage of when I first got it. It had maybe three or four leaves about a year ago when I got it. And I mean, it took a while to get started, but I've just been loving, loving, loving this plant because now it feels like a full plant. It'll only continue to get fuller from this point, I think. I cannot wait to have like a full hanging basket of this plant because I think that that would just look amazing. But okay, I will say like, I feel like I don't hear enough people talking about the Hoya Fichii, to be quite honest. Like, I know that people have it. Like, I've seen it around. People know about it. Part of me wonders if it's not just, like, pretty underrated, to be quite honest, because, like, look at that venation, you guys. And the color of the leaves, too, is just so nice. And the leaf shape is really, really nice. And this is definitely up there in terms of the Hoya that I love and enjoy. And I love 
Hoya and these little terracotta pots with the patina. It's just, it's so cute. It's so cute. I have this hanging in a south facing window along with the rest of my Hoya. Although I have considered putting it in the greenhouse cabinet because there is a spot open in there. We'll have to see, but it's a very specific spot. It's on one of the magnetic shelves. So only like a pot that's about this size can fit on there or smaller, but it has to be a plant that can withstand a decent amount of light because it's really close to the grow lights. All right, this next one is another plant that I've grown from a wee baby, although it did not take nearly as long as some of the other ones that I was just talking about because like the other ones I was talking about were at least a year in, in the working, if not like two years, but this one, has only been a few months. And again, I'm going to have to post videos or, or pictures of kind of like what the progress has been, but this is an itty bitty fern leaf cactus. And I do have a full sized fern leaf cactus downstairs that I also really, really love. And my long-term plan will be to probably pop them together. But this plant particularly has grown so well. Oh my goodness. Okay, just let's take a moment to appreciate, look, that is a fern leaf frond that has grown from absolute scratch. You guys, same with this. And like over here too, that has grown really, really well. And these parts are a little bit more scraggly, but like they've all shown lots of signs of growth. It's grown so much. Um, I, I, when I first got this plant, I was afraid for it. If I'm being honest, this was actually part of a plant trade that I got from a friend over the summertime. And I was really, really excited to get this plant, but there were a few cuttings uh, that she gave me that were like rooting or rooted. So I potted it up and I had it in the prop box for a long time. It was declining a little bit and just, I don't know. It, <sighs> There was a little bit of roller coaster with it and it took a really long time for it to get started with growing. So honestly, like I wasn't really sure if it was going to make it just because it, it didn't seem to be that healthy after the shipping process. This plant has defied all odds. I went ahead and put it in the greenhouse cabinet, not really expecting it to do much because it had been months and it hadn't really done anything. If anything, it like looked like it was declining or like crisping in certain areas and stuff. But oh my word, you guys, over the winter, over, yeah, over like the last month, I would say it has really begun taking off. It's like actively growing. Every time I look at it, I feel like it's grown more. And like, again, like this and this and this, like that's all brand new growth. I'm so happy. It, it turned around. Like there's something so deeply satisfying. Like that is that has to be one of the best parts about this hobby is nursing a plant from like maybe the brink of death or like not so great circumstance was giving you a hard time or, or had pests or it, you know, all whatever the reason is that the plant wasn't doing well, the process of nursing it back to health or, or, or growing it into something bigger than what it was before, that is an incredible feeling. There's something so restorative to that and hopeful to that. And now it doesn't always happen. Sometimes plants decline or, or they go, you know, the opposite where like you grow them up and, and they are really flourishing and then they really decline. And that is like the pit of despair, right? But with this plant, at, at least we are on the incline, we're on the up and up. Hopefully I don't experience a decline with this, but maybe someday I will like look back on this video and be like, you were being too optimistic, but okay, come on, don't steal my thunder. I want to appreciate this plant for where it's at today. And um, yeah, today it's on my favorites list of December, 2023, because it has made a comeback and it's growing actively and it's looking really, really cute. That's all I have to say. Last plant on my favorites list is the Philodendron Ring of Fire. And I actually got this at the same time as the Jewel Orchid. So I really have not had this plant for a long time at all. <laughs> I just have to say that I really admire this plant, especially now that I have it potted up and on a pole and I'm kind of anticipating the future. It is putting out a new leaf for me right now. I have to say, okay, I didn't fully get the Ring of Fire hype, if I'm being honest. No, okay, it's not that I, I always thought that it was a beautiful plant. It was never like on my wish list per se. Like I never really was like, oh yeah, I really, really want that plant. I will stop at nothing to get that plant. Even when it was extremely trendy, extremely popular, more expensive. Nowadays, you can find it in grocery stores. It's starting to become more accessible, which is fantastic. But yeah, even at its height, I never found myself really wanting a ring of fire, but I will say now that I have 
one. Particularly, I mean, this one I think is a really fantastic specimen. I, but yeah, now that I have one and I'm seeing it in my collection, I'm just, I'm like, okay, yeah, I couldn't do without this plant. I mean, okay. That's being dramatic. I could do without any of my plants, but within the realm of my plant collection and how I've curated it, I mean, the variegation on this is honestly unmatched. I think this might be some of my favorite variegation that I've ever had on any plant ever. <laughs> like, it's honestly a little bit similar to the Thai constellation in terms of the vibe because it's more creamy and it has lots of like different shades to it and speckling and that sort of thing, but like, Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. The, I, this plant is so good. It's so good. And again, I really haven't completely settled this plant. I like, I haven't fully decided where I want to put it yet because honestly, I have kind of like a work in progress of trying to figure out a good place to put all of the plants that I'm putting on moss poles. <laughs> but anyways, even in spite of that, I, I feel like it's, I mean, it's already putting off new growth. It's being super easy and communicative in terms of when it needs to be watered. It has, so far for me, it's been pretty straightforward. Again, it's only been like about a month, so I can't speak to it in terms of the long term. But as of right now, this is definitely up there in terms of my favorite philodendron. And this might be, my favorite variegated plant that I own, period. It's so gorgeous. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, so I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. All those things are super helpful for my channel. And please do let me know what your favorite house plants are this month and, and plants and even like plant products or things that you've been doing that have been standing out to you. I would love to hear your own story in the comments down below. So yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.